Hey there everyone, Lord Fidget here with another episode of Aether Raids Offense. Today we are in light season, and as usual I had a fairly smooth experience. I did have a couple somewhat embarrassing unforced errors at the end, but it all worked out. I did manage to pick up a Mela from the Legendary Hero Banner. With her in the mix, I was able to change up my Bow Cavalry team to be purely performance-focused, allowing me to fight Cancer with Cancer. You'll see what I mean by that later. I was also able to poke around with a quote-unquote final boss Idun setup, which was pretty funny. Anyway, I think it's about time we got into the battles. The first map is this somewhat box-ish, somewhat prison-ish setup that basically amounts to tossing a bunch of threatening units together and hoping for the best. Make sure to note that Azura has no weapon, so she will be forced to provide refreshes. The biggest weakness is the wall of structures in the lower half of the map. If you have a unit that can handle a Scythia on the enemy phase, you can easily get the enemies moving by placing your unit in her range without breaking anything on the left side, then breaking the accessory shop on the right. This guarantees that after Lysithia attacks, Larsae will move next, as she has no assist, and get Azura's refresh, forcing her to funnel down the right-hand side to approach you. Another more situational weakness is isolation. Since Azura has no weapon, she will likely stay in place when isolated, which is a very easy way to ensure that you can keep applying isolation to her. I'm going to go ahead and send in the final oh, nice boss Idun setup for this uh, for this map. This is a quick test that I'm running, honestly. Uh, this bot is usually occupied by Dragon Wagon. I'm just trying this out to see what I like about it, what I don't like, etc. Uh, I'm thinking about using two airs instead of Peony. Uh, like just this. to prevent Bramimon from getting his automatic follow from Void Tome, but I don't know, I'm still still working things out, seeing what I like. In this map, I'm going yes. to be able to initiate by repositioning Idun up, then providing a refresh, uh, moving the air out of the way so Minerva can Understood. smite her up towards Lysithia. She will have enough this punch to one-hit KO, and in fact, she's not really taking damage from anything else on, the, on this enemy phase, so it probably would have even been fine to just let Lysithia attack her. Uh, Mila is going to provide isolation to this Azura, so she won't be able to refresh. And in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and keep Mila here. On the enemy phase, I believe Yoon and uh, Merrick should be attacking Idun. And then I'm not really sure what Larce and Brandon Mod are going to choose to do, so I guess we'll have to see. Yoon, oh gosh, she gets totally obliterated by a, by a couple 71s, although I guess only one of them actually hits her. And Merrick's even going to have a rougher time, I'm pretty sure, since he's going to trip her Aether. Uh, so that's, uh, interesting, as, of course, being, being green, they, they don't really do a, a whole lot to her. Although I imagine, I mean, what greens would. I guess, le I guess legendary Salica would, just because her tome is, tome is true damage. So, let's see here, Larce probably gets her Aether, but that's alright. Since only Bramimond, and even then, I'm not sure Bramimond actually gets to attack her. Since Azura is kind of occupying that spot, let me just get some field buffs up, move air towards that Aether Fountain, and then I'll go ahead and just leave Mila, leave Mila right where she is. Larce will attack Idun on the enemy phase. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, I don't think she has a signif significantly high uh, speed to uh, a speed advantage that will allow her to survive this, especially with that Aether activation. Yeah, she, actually, she didn't even need the Aether activation. She just hits that. It's that hard. Okay, so Azura does actually move down, probably just to get away from Idun. And, you know, just Idun. But I should be able to get Bramimon here by moving Idun straight down, then refreshing her and smiting her in with Minerva. She should have enough punch to take him out. And after that, I'll basically just have Air go around and grab the Aether structures, and then finish the, uh, finish the battle by attacking Azura with Idun. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, and play the rest of this one out. Yes. Let's go. Ready. What would he do? This world. I bestow my blessing. The glimmer of life. Yes. <gasps> Map number two is a box setup using Bramimond and Elliewood as reasonably high-range space coverage vanguard units to lower approach options, with Ophelia and Julia serving as their primary backup. Notably, Julia is likely to receive Azura's refresh, and her range will overlap with Elliewood's afterward. 
If she moves straight down, it will actually cover Elliewood's range and also hit one space beyond Bramimon's, so do be careful of that. The biggest weakness I see is this space right here. If you can break the Aether Fountain and put a two-range tank at this location, you can get rid of both Bramimond and Azura and not need to worry about fighting anyone else on that turn. This allows you to deal with Elliewood on the next player phase where he is significantly less threatening. It is also possible to execute a hit-and-run strategy using a two-range attack or to remove Elliewood as long as you take care to use refreshing and repositions to get your units out of Julia's extended threat range. I'm going to go ahead and send in the Cedar rating party for this battle. There's some pretty tight math, but I actually determined that Cedar can take out Bramimond with the full uh, death reduction from Pegasus Light. So, I'm going to go ahead and start things off by breaking structures up the left-hand side. That'll be important so I can also get Azura out of the picture as well. I thought I was going to be able to break this Aether Fountain, but now I don't think I can. Hold on. Uh, alright, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Although, wait, shoot. No, I remember what I was going to do now. I would have done, ugh, I guess it doesn't matter, but I should have refreshed air, broken the structure, repositioned uh, air out, or er, peony out with Sita, then refreshed Sita and repositioned air out with Sita again. <sighs> oh well, whatever. So let me go ahead and this is gonna cost me a turn or two, but I think I'll be okay. We'll have to see. I'm going to be able to take out the Aether Fountain on this turn. And then I don't think I'll be able to get, to get, uh, huh, no, I won't. Shoot. I won't be able to get Sita to that, uh, to that space that she needs to be to tank out Bramimond, Azura, and Sothis until next round, I don't think. Let me actually take some thinking time here just to make sure. Let's go. What's wrong? Yes. And how may I help? Okay, so there really is no way around taking an extra turn here, so I'm just going to hit and turn. And then hopefully turn 4 initiation should be fine. I'm kind of worried about my ability to get the 8th round 4A, but oh well. And I mean, if only I, if only my execution had been a little bit better, I would have had, would have had more time, but that's life, I guess. Alright, let me go ahead and move some uh, units. Yeah, no, this, this should be perfectly fine. There's, there's, uh, I don't see any issues here. Bramimond should be attacking first, I would imagine, as he does deal the most damage. A pair of 15s actually doesn't even put her below half HP. And uh, that's three less damage on him than I thought I was going to get, but it's totally fine since so she still manages an exact KO. Ah, I had to break the panic manner, and so he chooses to attack him there, which is affected by Azura's drive death. That was actually a miscalculation on my part, fortunately for me. That miscalculation did not affect her ability to take him down. And I'm pretty sure the Azur had Wings of Mercy. Actually, she probably would attack Peony. Uh, she might have, Peony might have died, though. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter in the end. Azura is going to go down to Sita, and then we'll have to see how Julia and Ella would choose to move. Okay, that's totally fine. Unfortunately, Sita is going to be healed by Air's uh, Sparkling Boost, so Azura is not going to be able to warp to her. However, I should be able to take down Julia, and uh, that will activate her Gale Force, so she can just walk out of the range of Ophelia. And then I can simply smite Azura over here to take out Elliewood. And then we'll have to see how I want to try and proceed towards the Aether Structures. So let me go ahead and just move. First off, I need to uh, need to get Sita out of the way. Yes. And actually, hmm, yeah, Air should Good be able morning. to do it if I can reposition with Sita. So what then next? I just move Sita down. Maybe yeah, this way. that's fine. Okay. Uh, hmm. So you. Ooh, that's kind of annoying. There's no way I can get Azura to safety, is the first thing I notice. So I would need to... Okay, Sita can take you out. That's fine. What if... Oh yeah, here's what I can do, I think. I can reposition air. Yes! After I reposition air, then I will be able to take out the Amphorae. And then I can use two refreshes to get Sita up to take out Ophelia and finish off the map. Let's go! Today's final map is a disgusting cavalry setup featuring super high investment Dimitri, Claude, and Python with a rally trap setup. Notice that if you attempt to bait out Claude or Python, the other can leap out to provide a rally, then get refreshed by Burkut. 
Additionally, if you've applied any penalties to the unit you're baiting, Dimitri could potentially jump out instead, allowing his range to overlap with the assisted bow cavalier's range. I'm not going to mince words here, this setup is very strong, and it's definitely not anything that I would expect most players to be prepared for. It's a very structurally sound map. I would say that the closest thing it has to a generic weakness is isolation. Hitting Claude or Python will make it easier to bait just one of the two out, since they won't be targetable by rallies or harsh command. If you can get Bramimon to move down left, you can guarantee that he will receive Berkut's refresh as well. Alternatively, hitting Dimitri will stop his harsh command, allowing you to potentially fight both bow cavaliers on the same turn, depending on your unit placement and whether either of them chooses to rally. Keep in mind that hitting Dimitri with isolation won't necessarily hit Berkut, especially if you're using Mila, since Berkut's 54 death could possibly be high enough to stop her. Alright, I'm totally gonna get rematched for this, but I'm going to send in my bow cav team. This g team is a guaranteed victory. I think I could pull it off with Vital Boss of Dune, but it's not guaranteed, I don't think. Uh, she can take out Python and Claude on the first enemy phase, but after that she's below half HP. I think actually air heals her back above the threshold, but still, it's a close thing. And then you, she still has to deal with Dimitri, Berkut, and Bramulon, and I just didn't want to deal. So, here goes Bo Lin. <laughs> uh, she will be able to take out Python with four hits. Thanks to uh, Mila for providing the extra death and HP required to survive that. And then Peony's Refresh will allow her to take out Bramimond, and then I'll need to refresh her one more time to uh, get my Peony out of Claude's range. So, after that, on the enemy phase, I am expecting a rally out of Claude, so let's go ahead and see how that goes. Uh, oh, well, there's the rally, but after Brakut moves. Uh, because isolation hits him, duh. <laughs> I'm still in the mindset that uh, Mila's doing the isolating and she can't actually hit Perkut with that. Fortunately, Lin is able to take out Claude with two hits, including one Luna that she actually didn't need. Uh, oh, hold on. Does my positioning work out here? Hold on. I need to make sure she's out of the range of Sothis. Hold on, I need to take some thinking time for this. I'll be right back with you. Maybe this way. Alright, it was a close thing. I needed to make sure that one, the positioning worked out, and two, Lynn would actually be able to KO Brakut. It turns out that she will be able to do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and take out uh, Dimitri here. And then I will need to just break the, uh, break the fence, which gives Peony a nice safe space from which to refresh Lynn. Unfortunately, that does also take the drive attack stack away, but that's fine. She is still able to KO Brakut because of her Luna activation. So let me go ahead and take care of that. And from here, it's just getting the Aether structures. It will be done. So let me go ahead and... Uh, with, that shouldn't be a problem with... Uh, oh, that tactics room's kind of annoying. Oh, and Sothis, of course, decided to move straight yes. over to the right. Uh, let me take care of that tactics room, and then let me go for the Aether Fountain first, actually. And I'm pretty sure, like 90% sure, that Sothis is going after Mila. So let me move Mila d Good down morning. here, try and bait Sothis down right, and then have Lynn take the Aether Fountain. If all works out properly, um, let's see. Okay, good, it does. I will have Lynn able to uh, take out the Aether Amphorae by having the Peony Refresher here. Let me just triple check this matchup. Oh yeah, that's definitely a kill. And then Refresher one more time to finish the job. And that is it! I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Aether Raid's Offense. I was completely unsurprised when I woke up this morning to find out that the person from the last map rematched me. Anyway, next week we'll be back in Astro Season, where the brave heroes will be bonus units. Edelgard is currently occupied in, with the arena, so my plan is to have her jump in after that's finished, and to use Claude in the upcoming Astro Week. It should be nice to have a two-range tank as a bonus unit. Hopefully, I'll see you all again then for an Aether Raid's Offense video covering that experience. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.